All right, man, peace. So as we can see, the panel is about to speak to the great Steph Curry. And the little bit of travail and trial that Steph has gone through in regards to his inability to attain the NBA Finals MVP award is proof positive that just because we want something does not mean that we're going to get it. Most likely because we don't deserve it when we want it. We get it when we deserve it. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Oh, you look stressed out, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, equip, equip with some popcorn. Here is uh, Steph who had uh, 37 here in a Game 4 win. So let me ask you something I just asked Coach. Draymond said, even though maybe when he was on set, one not more gratifying step than the other, this was the hardest run. Did you feel that over the course of this year through the postseason, that this was maybe the toughest run to go through? Now, before Steph Curry answers this question, look at Steph's right kneecap. It looks like he has some type of protection there underneath his compression pants. He easily could say, you know what? I partially tore my MCL, but I did not want to let anyone know. I played through it. Mr. LeBron James has to let everyone know that allegedly he had a broken right hand and supposedly I guess that's supposed to be the reason why he did not perform up to par in the last three games of this series, at least by his alleged standards. Even though I thought that he played fine in game number two, game number three he did his best, game number four he flamed out, he gave up and he quit. But that was his contingency plan to let everyone know the reason why I, LeBron James, got swept in my 15th season is because I hurt my hand hitting the whiteboard. Very pathetic. For sure. I mean, uh, from an injury standpoint, throughout the course of the season, we had to kind of mix and match lineups to get us through the 82 games. And obviously, we've, we've been number one seed the last, well, before this year, the last three years. And uh, the journey was going to be different going into the playoffs than it was. And... You know, to be down 3-2 in the Western Conference Finals without home court advantage to try to fight our way out of that and build some momentum coming into the Finals. Um, we knew going into this year that the journey was going to be totally different. I uh, didn't quite know what that meant, but uh, we're back and we, we got the job done and it's a great feeling. When you talk about different, you know, the last four years, three times I've been here when you guys have won. And this year, you guys, just all of you, Coach Kerr, Draymond Green, Andre, yourself, you guys just seem exhausted. And uh, I mean, just the, the the wear and tear, the mental grind, you know, you know, just talk about how hard that is. People think you guys just roll the ball out and play and you win with ease, but just how hard it is to, to be they at that level. That, they only think they're grand because they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They just won four <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, this is our fourth year in a row chasing this, this trophy and this moment. Um, Assuming that Golden State stays healthy, I just don't see anyone beating them now. They just have way too much talent, and they're just entering their primes right now. Most of their top players are 29, 30 years old. They should be on top for at least the next three years, barring injury. And obviously, I mean, honestly, human nature kicked in a little bit during the regular season where you try to fast forward to the end of the season, or to, to you know, April, May, and June, when the games are really matter. But um, at the end of the day, uh, you got to go through everything to get to this point, and it makes you who you are. And um, I don't think, you know, without our experience last year, I don't think we get through a Western Conference Finals like we had this year to get back to the finals. Um, and it, in the fourth quarter of the night, obviously I know we were up 3-0 and had a chance to go, you know, sweep or whatever. That was the hardest quarter, just physically and mentally trying to just, you know, bullshit. You know, finish the game the right way and. Um, we were on the bench for two and a half minutes left just looking at each other like, yo, that was tough. And it's an amazing feeling to get it done. You know, Steph, when we look at your skill set, I think one of your greatest skill sets besides your shot is your unselfishness. I agree. And when I look at your team, your greatest skill set is your unselfishness. And Draymond came and he said it may have started when uh, Andre Iguodala went to the bench and continued when you're the MVP and you allowed another MVP to come. Just for the kids and for the fans, everyone, you talk about your unselfishness because you're a winner because of that and a, a lot of people may not be able to have that kind of spirit very strange question i'm not saying that it's a bad question but a very strange one you're asking someone to talk about how unselfish they are <laughs> seems kind of oxymoronic in an extended type of way but i get what chris weber is getting at if it were not for the largesse of steph curry 
this team would not be as functional as they appear to be on an everyday basis. Because a person with a personality like a Steph Curry, he alleviates a lot of tension because he's so relaxed, he's so comfortable with who he is. Now Kevin Durant is kind of sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum in regards to his comfort with who he is as a person. He's also relatively laid back, but it's very easy to bring out the insecurities that are within Kevin Durant. That's why every once in a while he confesses to how he needs validation, how he needed his peers to tell him that he was great, even though it was obvious to everyone that he was great. And I think that that is kind of a byproduct of how Kevin Durant was raised as opposed to how Steph Curry was raised. That's why I make videos pertaining to brothers watching over their seed because there's not much that the woman can do in regards to raising her son to imbue him with that inner confidence that's really a necessity, particularly for the so-called black man to be fully functional in a society like this. Your son and your daughter for that matter, but particularly your sons have to be prepped for what they're going to deal with. And there's a reason why Steph Curry can open himself up and allow his territory to be shared by another large predator. <laughs> you know, like how people love to make those allegorical statements about top-level athletes being quote-unquote apex predators. Steph Curry had his own pride. He was a lion. He had his own pride. And he allowed another lion to come and take part in the benefits of ruling over his pride. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. But I will say this. I do believe that the Golden State Warriors front office spoke to him and of course not just asked him if it would be okay if they went out and recruited Kevin Durant but I think that they pressed upon him the urgency of them all traveling out to New York where Kevin Durant was vacationing as a unit to show him that there would not be any issues if he were to sign with the team in regards to whose team it was going to be that Steph Craig was fully on board and I'm sure that in his private moments, he had to think to himself, I wonder if the front office is fully confident that I can lead a team to a championship still in light of what occurred in the 2016 finals. But it was necessary, no doubt about it, because I believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers would have had a mental edge over that current incarnation of Golden State with Harrison Barnes, etc. Had, had they stood pat. I don't care if Golden State would have came back the next year and won 74 games. If they would have met Cleveland in the finals, I think that Cleveland would most likely have beat them again just because of that mental edge that Golden State had allowed them to gain over them in the 2016 finals. So they had to shake up the roster. It was very important that they got rid of Festus Azili and a lot of the other players who came up short down the stretch of 2016. That's why I say it's so comical to me when people talk about how talented the 2016 Warriors were. They won 73 games because they had the perfect roster of players for that system. And everyone fit in perfectly together. They were like a well-oiled machine. But they were not good enough to persevere against the sequence of events that befell them down the stretch of that 2016 Finals which was one of the more tragic endings that I can remember seeing to a sports team, to a professional sports team that had such high aspirations for themselves. You got to blend that type of mentality with uh, extreme self-confidence and kind of that killer instinct. And it might come out a different way for me. Like I smile and I have fun on the court and I like to pass and move and cut and set screens and all that. I don't have the ball in my hands all the time. What Steph Curry was describing there were his many skills that often go unnoticed, not to the trained eye, but would truly make him a magnificent player. I've stated this in other videos. He's probably one of the top five most impactful players of the last 25 years. When I think of the NBA players that I've seen who had the greatness of impact, especially on the offensive end, in the last 25 years, I think Michael Jordan, I think Allen Iverson, I think Shaq, I think Kobe, and I think Steph Curry right here in regards to impact offensively where you had to know where they were at every turn and of course honorable mention to LeBron you could argue that LeBron could be in that top five in regards to offensive impact but the way that Steph Curry stretches the floor the way that the defense always has to be aware of where he's at at all times in game three of the NBA finals the Cleveland Cavaliers were paying more attention to Steph Curry than they were even Kevin Durant. 
Why is that? Because as I've stated, Kevin Durant is like a great left jab. A great fighter can win a fight with just a great left jab, but the decision's probably going to be close. Steph Curry is like a great right hand. In combination with that left jab, you're going to get a knockout. I mean, just think about it. Whenever Steph Curry has one of those huge games where he scores 35 points through three quarters, it's almost always going to be a blowout. But when Kevin Durant goes for 40 and 45, it's almost always a close game. As a matter of fact, I remember a game that the Golden State Warriors played in Portland last regular season in which Kevin Durant had something like 54 points and they lost the game. I can't remember the last game that Steph Curry had where he scored 50 or more points and they lost the game. As a matter of fact, I can't remember the last 50 point game that Steph Curry had that was even close. I think that there was a regular season game that they had against the Dallas Mavericks a couple of seasons ago, maybe even three seasons ago during their first championship run in which he had 51 points in the game and it was close down the stretch. But almost every other 50 plus point game from Steph or 40 plus point game from him was a blowout because the way that he plays offense demoralizes the opponent. But I uh, truly value everybody that just steps a foot on the floor with me. And they make me better, and I try to make them better. And we've tried to set that identity as a team from, I say, probably the Draymond and Clay, you know, draft, or, or sorry, Draymond's draft class when we started to make the playoffs, you know, and, and build up to this moment. Um, and we haven't lost that the whole way. So uh, I, I wonder if the NBA has a metric pertaining to offensive impact per touch of the basketball. Per dribble, I would guess that Steph Curry would most likely be one of the top five or top three most impactful offensive players in NBA history in relation to how many dribbles he has per game or how often he touches the basketball because his usage rate is not high in comparison to a Russell Westbrook, a LeBron James, or James Hardhead, or James Harden. Let me give James Harden that much credit because his team did go seven games with the Warriors and he played hard. He didn't play smart, but he played hard. But Steph Curry, he touches the basketball. Yes, he gets fancy with the dribble sometimes, but it's never an elongated dribble like you see with a James Harden or LeBron James. He, he touches the basketball, and he makes his offensive move, whether it's going to be a shot or a pass, quickly. And if he doesn't have what he wants, he moves the ball very quickly, and then he moves his body. That's what makes him so difficult to guard. That's what wears down the defender mentally. He embarrassed LeBron in game four when LeBron tried to guard him. I was embarrassed for LeBron. Basically what LeBron said coming into game four is, I'm not even going to consider trying to guard Kevin Durant. What I'll do, I'll make it look good. I'll guard Steph and act like I'm trying to find a challenge for myself defensively. And LeBron was embarrassed. Steph Curry ran him all across the floor, got wide open jumpers, dribbled around him, made him look foolish. That's why I say do not be surprised to see a precipitous drop-off in LeBron James' play coming into next season. I don't care how many PEDs he allegedly is taking. You cannot be great forever. Father Time is undefeated. There's no doubt about it. But just getting back to Steph Curry, with the way that he plays without the basketball on offense, being almost as impactful as he plays with the basketball, there's no doubt in my mind that he's one of the most impactful offensive players at the very least of the last 25 years, especially in the three-point shooting era. Because this is the era where what he does is magnified. If Steph were playing in the 60s or 70s, it would not have been to his advantage that he could make 30-foot shots because it would count just as much as a dunk. Uh, I, I'm proud to have a part in that and uh, try to lead that, that mentality. Uh, because it leads to moments like this. Well, number one, let's get let's cut through the BS and get to the good stuff. How many shots you giving me in Tahoe? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, every time, uh, I, granted, you know, three out of four years winning a championship. As soon as the buzzer horns, that's the first, the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> How many days it took time? But uh, give me a shot of home. So you need more. I you need more than that. Need chip, more than that. I'm trying to do the math. Yeah. Why does Charles Barkley love making a jackass of himself so much? Watching Charles try to swing a golf club is like watching a baby trying to take his first steps. I mean, it's like, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 55-year-old man swinging a golf club with two pauses. Give him man. two like, shots, though. Give him 40 strokes. I bet you See, you're going to be there, too, right? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, need, I need a stroke. He needs two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, give me a shot of home. 
I just all I need. I can't have it. Listen, I'm, I got some pride. I'll I'm give not, you, I'm making. Says who? You got some pride. Says who? Says the man who's dressed in drag on national TV on at least four or five different occasions. I'll make a deal. I'll give you a shot of hole if you let me hold the mic in the karaoke bar. You know, man, listen, I'm the greatest living girl. <laughs> See, he's gonna give the mic up. I, I, give the mic up. <laughs> I told you, I, I sing Frank Sinatra, you know. Yeah, that. I've been in there. Oh, oh. You know, they call me old brown eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who told us he breaks his eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, let, let me ask you, uh, some of the shots that you hit, we always see the tunnel routine and all that, so I know a, a lot of the shots that you take, you practice, but some of these, what? Well, the audacity. I, what I mean, it's, do you realize at any point how crazy this is for some of us, especially for these guys who played, never seen anybody take these kind of shots before? I mean, I, I, at some point or another, I've messed around in the, in the gym, shooting them, practicing them, all that type of stuff, but. That's one of Curry's gifts as well. He has an extreme level of hand-eye coordination. And to be honest with you, none of the shots that he makes surprises me at this point. Because it's clear that he drills just about every jump shot and every shot around the glass, around the rim that you can drill. And when you want extreme results, you have to resort to extreme measures of practice. But I have a... Uh... Uh, supreme confidence in myself when I'm out there, and uh, that's why you sometimes you might go for nine because you just from the three you might just you know just keep jacking them up because you feel that much confidence. And... Yeah, well, you know what, brother, you have too much offensive skill to just sit back and take long contested three point shots when they're not going in. So hopefully for you next year, should your Golden State Warriors be fortunate and healthy enough to get back to the finals. In game three, you'll be focused on being as proficient as possible as opposed to just jacking up three-point shots because it costs you this year's MVP award. Um, you know, I put a lot of work into it, and uh, I've been blessed with the talent and skill and want to keep doing it. On the way out, your uh, oh, family tweets one, are coming. I want to say What's one thing to you. Good. I just want you to know I wish you had a plate in my day because if I saw that little... I want to body block you so hard. I, I, you start doing that little shimmy. You would have had it? I would have had it. You might have knocked me down. I would have got up and shimmy right back in your face. <laughs> Cats always act like there were no celebrations back in the 90s. Mark Jackson used to do the shimmy right in Charles Barkley's face, and he wouldn't do shit. Here's, here's a tweet from your brother on the way out. Three of them and counting. Go. Seth Curry's job is to take the three championship rings to the jewel and get them shined. <laughs> Golden State not going anywhere. Parade coming up on Tuesday. We got more coming up on Game Time live from the NBA Finals. Back to back and three out of four. But anyway, that's it on Mr. Steph Curry. Congratulations to him. Peace.